In this lesson, we'll introduce the concept of the joint density function for a pair of random variables, and we'll show how to use this density to solve for interval probabilities and expectations. Well, the joint density function for a pair of random variables is a natural extension of the density function for a single random variable. That is, it's a non-negative function that must integrate to 1. Now, for any two-dimensional region, A, we can evaluate the probability that the pair of random variables takes a value in that region by integrating the density over that region. Likewise, the expected value for any function of the two random variables is evaluated by integrating the product of that function with the joint density function. Now, if we integrate the density over one of the variables, in this case y, the result is called the marginal density for the, random for the other random variable. Here, for example, is the marginal density for the random variable x, and here's the marginal density for the random variable y. Now, as an example, let's consider a joint density function that looks like this, where the range of values for which the density is non-zero are where x and y are both greater than or equal to zero. Now one way to visualize a two-dimensional density is by a two-dimensional mess plot or surface plot like the one that's shown here. Or we might show the density as a false color plot like the one shown here. Now from this density we can see that the most likely region for a realization of the pair of random variables is where the density is the largest. Of course realizations outside of that region are possible, but that's the region where we would expect to see most of the realizations. Now suppose we wanted to know, for example, the probability that the random variable x is greater than the random variable y, which is the shaded region that we've shown here. Now it should be clear that the probability will be greater than one half because there appears to be more of the density in that region, but to get the exact value, we'd need to evaluate the integral over the region. And one way to do that is to integrate over the variable x from y to infinity and then integrate over y from 0 to infinity. And if we do that for this particular density, we should get the value equal to 11 sixteenths or 0.6875. Now let's suppose we'd like to know the average value that x takes. To do that, we'd multiply the density by x and integrate over both of the ranges. Likewise, we get the expected value for y in a similar way, this time multiplying by y and integrating over both ranges. And those expectations will evaluate to approximately 0.9 for x and 0.6 for y. Finally, let's take a look at the marginal densities for x and y. If we integrate the density over the variable y, we'll get the marginal for x, and it'll look something like this, where for purposes of displaying this marginal density, we're showing it upside down. Likewise, the marginal density for y would look like this. And in both cases, the densities involve error functions, which shouldn't be too surprising because of the way that the joint density has a quadratic function of x and y in its exponent. Now in subsequent lessons, we'll look into the concept of the joint density for a pair of random variables in more detail. And specifically, we'll discuss conditional densities and the concept of correlation and covariance.